I'm here with Joe Rotella, and he is, has a way to light things up with this amazing light up sign. I love this to celebrate the holidays or, or just maybe even a good mood, Joe. I'm always in a good mood. <laughs> I love that. So tell us a little bit about what you've made. Well, I really wanted a sign, and I really wanted it to light up. So, of course, the first challenge was figuring out what I was going to say, and the key to this particular project is planning. So I decided on the word joy, and then I cut it out using an electronic cutter just so that I would have a template. The next thing that's you really... That's a really big piece of paper. That's a big piece of paper. And I didn't have a piece big enough, so this is just two pieces taped together. Because ah, it's only a template. Clever. So okay. And by the way, this is something like when you make clothes and stuff and you do like a muslin version of it first, sometimes it's nice to do out of paper to make sure your idea is going to work. That's why when I sew all my own clothes, I use that <laughs> muslin trick. Okay, okay. So I cut out the word joy, and now is where planning really becomes important. I found the lights here at my grocery store in the summer section, you know, with like bug spray and all the seasonal stuff, and they were very inexpensive. There's 60 lights on that strand, and rather than figure out how to cut it and shorten it, the whole goal was to use all 60. So I started making little dots where I could put the lights, and you want to use a pencil for this so you can erase them and move them around. And if you notice, they're numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then 10 jumps way over here. I was going to say, it looks like it goes 917. Well, because here you have to be able to go around and then backtrack to get back where you left off. Oh. So you need to plan a little bit when you get into these dead ends. How do you backtrack out and make your way all the way around? Um, once I did that, then I actually used a hole punch so that I could go through and punch it all the way through. And the next job is to trace it. And I'm using a permanent marker, and it traces really well on this foam because the foam say, is smooth. I was going to say, tracing on top of foam can be a little bit tricky because it's bumpy. But this is smooth. Feel that. It is pretty In smooth. fact, feel that ball over there. It's an incredibly smooth I know. Smooth I was ball. saying this. I'm ready to make Christmas ornaments or something with this. See? It seems it would be like a fun thing because to do, right? Because it's so smooth, you can paint on it, collage mm -hmm. on it, just ready to go. So you're going to trace this all the way around, and you're going to make the little marks for all the holes where the so lights So it doesn't matter what size the holes are, you are just trying to get their placement. Correct. Okay, correct. so at this point you're not worried about like the size of the lights or anything like that. No, and I actually have this side. We've already traced out the word joy. And again, we would just have this here. You might even want to put a little tape to hold it in place, but you're just going to make a dot where every hole should go. Then comes the fun part, cutting it out. Oh, good. So let's talk a little bit about a hot wire cutter. Mm -hmm. The wire gets up to about 400 degrees, so you do want to be a little bit careful. There is a gauge on here that we can use if we want to make perfectly straight cuts. So we can adjust this. We can even put it at an angle. Because you were saying if I didn't want to do the cursive letters like you have here, but if I wanted to do block letters, for instance, that I might want to use that in order to give myself like the perfect edges of the block letters. Absolutely. Or if you want to cut something to make an assembly, let's say I've been using gingerbread house patterns to build little houses mm -hmm. and then decorate them. Well, there's a lot of straight lines there, so using a guide like this gives you a perfectly straight line. Cool. And it never crumbles, and that edge is perfectly smooth. Now, in the case of our joy, I left the back of mine exposed to see all the wires. But if you want to hide the wires, you can actually cut two pieces of foam at the same time. You'll probably want to crank up the temperature a little bit. But when we cut two pieces at the same time... Now, I can see it's smoking a little bit, and that's totally fine. It's burning off some of the foam that might have gotten stuck to the wire from a previous cut. But there, I've cut two pieces at once, and it's perfect. So that means that if I were going to assembly line these and make like a whole bunch of them for somebody, I could actually cut even the curvy shapes two stacked together, and we could just make a ton. Absolutely. That's really cool. So now, I have a question for you. Uh, how do you cut out the inside of this? Oh, I don't understand that one. So there's two ways to do that. Okay. We can either just cut a straight line, go all the way around, mm -hmm. and then turn it off. Mm -hmm. Let it cool. Don't try to go back through the same hole because you'll make a, you'll never do it. Or we can drill a pilot hole, and this wire sits inside that little hole there. You can loosen it, lift it up, put it through your pilot hole, and now the wire would start on the inside. I see. Now, you said for our sake, because we're going to cover it with glitter and all that stuff, it doesn't matter. So we're just going to go ahead and cut fine. right through. And you're going to actually show us how easy that yep. is to do. Now, this is a big piece of foam, so it's a little hard to work with such a big piece. So the first thing I would probably do is just lop off, you know, this one end. 
just so that it's a little easier to handle inside the wire cutter. And you can see how easily it cuts and perfectly smooth. Absolutely. So to cut that letter O, I would probably just go straight like this through it. Mm -hmm. Now, Joe, any tips about cutting? Because you've been practicing a lot. Well, it's hard to stay right on the lines, I'll admit that, and it does take a little bit of practice. I find if I keep my hands on the tabletop and just push down, that I tend to stay a little bit closer to the line. Very much like a sewing machine. It is, and you don't want to really force this, although it really does feel like a knife in melted butter. I mean, now because we, we don't really, I don't want to say we don't care, but this letter joy, you know, it's not perfect, and when it's hanging on the wall, well, you know, I feel that way when I do free motion sewing, which is very much the same movement in which it's not that you don't care, but it's that in the end, nobody's going to know where the lines were. As long as you have the general shape, that's exactly. what counts. So I'm in the home stretch here. I can see that, that you're getting around there. Now we cut through and you said to make sure that we stop and don't try to cut back through the same cut because it's such a small, precise cut, you'll never be able to get to the same right, place, so I'm right? So I'm going to turn the machine off. Okay. And you can wait just about two seconds, and this wire is cool. Wow. So now we can actually spread it apart and take it right out. That's so cool. And that, so, that center just pops on out if I may yeah. yank it on out there. there That's you go. really cool. Totally precise. Now I have one already cut, and all the marks are drilled. Okay. And the question was how to get the holes. And the first yes. thing is what size. I'm going to switch places with you because I know you need to get to the drill press. What size holes? These lights are so flexible that I just bent it in half. Mm -hmm. And then I used this gauge to figure out what size drill bit would do the trick. And it looks like that one. Okay. So now I can go ahead and drill. We're not gonna use the vise, just take that off. I put a board here because if you press through without a board, the foam here will collapse inside that hole. Okay. So the board gives us a little bit of a guide. And turn it on. Again, we don't have to be very precise. Uh huh. I'm just lining up the hole, go a little slow until I feel it hit the wood underneath. I was gonna say, not only can you feel it, you can hear the difference when it hits the wood, so you don't have to guess whether or not you've made it through. Now, Joe, you happen to be wearing glasses. Do you think you need to wear safety glasses with this, or is this an easy thing since you're only cutting through foam that that would be okay? You know, I would always say safety first, so glasses would be great, but again, this is foam. If I were cutting wood mm -hmm. or metal drilling for jewelry, then for sure I'd wear safety goggles on top. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you because I think we have enough holes there. And I just want to show this, which I think is such a smart idea. Will you just talk us quickly through the uh, paint treatment that so you've done here? So here, I wasn't sure if I wanted red glitter, clear glitter, or a combination. So I just took a sample and tried it both ways. Which is such a great idea. You get the flexibility. And to apply the glitter, it's really easy. I started with just some red paint. And again, because this is smooth, you can paint right on it. Mm -hmm. So when you're all done, you're going to end up with this. Right. And then I just used a medium mm -hmm. and put some medium on here. Then you just spray glitter for days. You spray glitter for days. That's and if the you're best worried, part. of course, about loose glitter, you could, of course, use a glitter glue or something like that. But it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be I'm as much fan. fun. <laughs> How it could wouldn't it be as mean much that fun? you're covered in glitter forever. It's true. It's true. And now you have a glittery heart. And if you look back at our wonderful finished joy, which gives me joy, it is all lit up, all ready to rock, and totally glitter, glittery and awesomeness. So, so thank you thank so you. much, Joe.